Now, we have been talking about the destructive side of nature and how everything falls into dissolution and breaks down into particles, into emptiness. We've been talking about the destructive force of a windstorm that can come in and rip up a hundred trees, totally destroy a garden which has taken 20 years to cultivate, similar to in a man's life. But, as we see in the background, the river is not only dangerous, nature is not only dangerous, there are times when we find ourselves in a state of peace. It's especially good for the mind to be in a place where there are no neighbors, is no traffic, is no noise, are no people, nothing to distract you. When you're just part of the elements, you're just one thing in nature, not too different from a tree. A man and a tree are really not too different. They both struggle to survive and they both have roots. Now the explanation of peaceful, if we go very deeply into it, is once you are aware that all phenomena are conditioned things and that everything that is conditioned is bound to perish, to put it in the way we find it in one translation from the Pali text. We ourselves, instead of feeling I am a person in a body, this is me, my name is, we go through and into the elements. We see that we are nothing but a process beginning and ending, coming and going, and ever flowing. Just like the river. The river looks to be real, but you can't take a piece of it out and put it in a museum. The river is ever flowing and ever continuing, and ever made up of tiny elements, which when ultimately analyzed, become again kalapa or tiny impulses of energy and so a man as the Buddha said who goes to the riverside sits under a tree goes into his mind and concentrates on one thing which is the impermanence of all things and maybe focuses, for example, on the breath. He can go into that state of emptiness and peace, which is beyond all conditioned things, which is nearing the final step of deliverance on the path to Nibbana.